and off we go. Um, hello to everybody. And um, I took from Lausanne, Switzerland to um, our second round table organized by BrainFit for Life on the topic of data registries and brain health uh, with the focus on neurocognitive disorders. I'm very honored to have also um, guests. Uh, it's Muriel Bouchut here from the University Hospital and the University in Lausanne, Switzerland. Then we have uh, Ulrich Wagner, Gerhard Tischler and Ansgar Fellbecker. And I'll leave my guests a little bit of time to present themselves. Um, Muriel, the uh, stage is yours. Thank you, Bogdan. So my name is Muriel Bouchou. I'm a public health physician and an epidemiologist, a head of the Department of Epidemiology and Health Systems at Unisante. Um, and we are working closely with uh, a Lausanne University Hospital. And um, uh, in the department, we host several cohorts and registries, including the Cantonal Cancer Registry. And I've been working mainly on um, the epidemiology of cardiometabolic uh, diseases and of chronic diseases. Thank you, Muriel. Dr. Wagner. Um, if you can unmute yourself. Um, thank you very much for the word. Um, perhaps we can add uh, with Muriel. She's also the head of the, the Cantonal Cancer Re Registry. And in, uh, in this um, um, occupation, I have uh, close contact with her because I'm um, heading um, the, uh, um, the National um, Agency for Cancer Registration, uh, which is uh, uh, responsible for the implementation um, and the standardization, harmonization of the cancer registration um, activities in Switzerland. Um, um, uh, the NACR is hosted um, at the moment by the Foundation NICER, uh, which is not only NICE, but um, the National Institute for Cancer Epidemiology and Registration. Um, I'm a, a pu public health management um, specialist and uh, um, health economics um, is uh, uh, a long time um, orientation of myself, but always managing data. Thank you very much. And now up to Gerhard Tischler. Um, thank you, Bogdan. Uh, thank you very much for this um, in invitation to this uh, very interesting discussion. My name is Gerhard Tischler. I'm head of medical affairs, Alzheimer's disease for Europe for the company Biogen. I have some 20 years experience in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, working in clinical research and in the past that 12, 13 years in medical affairs, whereby um, I was working on several programs with registries on a smaller uh, scale on country level, regional level, and a global level in the neuroscience space, and also on phase four programs. And I think that's uh, also quite an interesting discussion, difference between phase four programs um, and registries and what they can uh, add uh, versus uh, other programs. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Gerhard. And now Ansgar Fellbecker. Yes, hello, Bogdan. Thank you very much for this kind invitation. And uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm a um, clinical neurologist. I'm um, uh, the head of the memory clinic here in St. Gallen, but also the president of the Swiss Memory Clinics Association. We represent uh, 44 memory clinics in Switzerland, uh, I would say all important memory clinics from all over the country. And so this is a very special network here in Switzerland, uh, quite well organized, uh, mainly from a clinical point of view and we work together and have uh, good quality standards. And I think this could be um, an opportunity to have uh, good um, databases, good, uh, if, we, if we find a way to share data um, in, a, in a way that's feasible for the clinicians and uh, not gives extra work, and um, that there could be uh, quite a good benefit for all of us. So I'm happy to be here, and um, I will bring the clinical point of view. And um, yeah, this is my daily routine working with patients, and this is what I can add to the discussion. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, um, Ansgar, um, to all our current and potential future listeners. Um, this will be an open discussion. Uh, we have certain ideas how to guide the discussion, but of course, all of the participants will express themselves uh, if they have an opinion on the topic that is discussed. And we'll kick off with the first reflection on data um, in the clinical domain, because everybody needs data, right? The big companies, I'm not going to name them, they use all our data for commercial purposes, but of course, in the clinical domain, um, this is a different story because we don't want to have the data, at least I'm talking from my position as a clinician to sell this data to anybody. We need data in order to enhance our accuracy of the diagnostics that we are delivering. That means our um, service to the patients. We are benefiting also from the expertise from other colleagues that is also shared for one particular patient. We can have the opinions of different experts and so on and so on. That means I would suggest to start with the general question, um, where is Switzerland on the map of um, health related data registries? And are we um, actually um, going to benefit from uh, certain new ideas in the field because on the one hand side we have the question about the data formats you know there is this so-called medical data convention format fire supported also by the big companies I'm talking here about google facebook etc on the other hand side we have of course this european initiative for data protection with the nice abbreviation GDPR, which again was reconciled recently uh, by the European Union in the form of the so-called European health data space. Um, that means I would invite my guests, experts, to express their opinion. Why do we need actually data? How do they see actually the benefits of either large scale data, I'm talking about thousands of data sets or data points up to big data where we are talking about millions of data. And how could Switzerland, which is a very small country, but well connected at the high technological and socioeconomic level, how can patients in the way how industry or Clinic sees this benefit from this. Um, I would say, Muriel, maybe you um, can start with, with your reflections and then we'll invite the other colleagues to participate. Thank you, Bogdan. Of course, it's a, it's a big question, a, a lot of questions that you're asking. So, so maybe a preliminary remark. Um, you know, in Switzerland, we have 26 healthcare systems. Uh, we have a decentralized system, a decentralized governance. The, the current coronavirus crisis has shown how difficult it was uh, for the Federal Office of Public Health to publish in a timely manner national data. It took quite a while because each canton has a different organization. Uh, each canton has made sometimes different decisions on how to define selected indicators. So, so it's difficult, you know, we are a small country, 8 million inhabitants. And uh, of course, from a data perspective, our decentralized uh, organization is not, uh, is not a positive aspect, is not a facilitating um, condition. Yet you, you may be aware of this uh, national initiative, you know, Swiss Personalized Health Network Initiative, which aims at facilitating the, the secure exchange of health-related data in Switzerland by putting in place, you know, those uh, uh, secured uh, highways um, to, to exchange uh, large amounts of data within the, the current context of, uh, you know, this increasingly um, massive amount of health-related data that are being collected every year. How can we deal with that? Uh, and how can we ensure that each, you know, at least university hospitals in Switzerland produce uh, data that are interoperable with each other so that, you know, you don't uh, impose them the system to store the data, to manage the data, but you impose the structure. 
we impose a given vocabulary that everyone needs to follow. This is also what's being done within the cancer registry setting, maybe Ulrich can speak about it later, where you know all cancer registry need to follow the same structure. For this specific example, it's a bit, it's even more restrictive because there is a law. You know, there is a law with an ordinance that tells you what you can register, how you can register it. It's very, very coded, and there is, you know international classification of, of disease that uh, needs to be followed. So, so I think the situation now is, um, is okay for cancer registration, for instance, in Switzerland, but we are certainly not the first, you know, in terms of uh, uh, this topic. Uh, uh, now there is a law uh, that was, um, you know, enacted on uh, January 1st, 2020, but uh, for many European countries, this has been the case since many, many years, even decades. So, so we're certainly not the best um, uh, example in terms of uh, national data sets. Uh, we, we don't have um, a, a national uh, uh, you know, health information system in Switzerland. Um, and even within a, a given canton, the canton of Vaux, uh, each institution has, has its own system. So even for this, it is, at least for us, if I take the cancer registry in the Canton of Vaux, it is a lot of time and energy to collect information from all these different institutions. We have a lot of people with whom we need to talk. You know, how do you transmit us the data? We have a given format. Please follow this format. From a technical point of view, we are spending a lot of energy for that. So, so I personally very warmly welcome this SPHN initiative because it forces people and institutions to follow the same standard. And so from that point of view, what is the position of Switzerland? I think we, we are not uh, in the top, certainly not in the top 10 position and maybe not in the top 50 position from my perspective. There are many other countries which are well advanced from, from that perspective. And even if we take uh, the example of the electronic patient file, you know, we have a new law. Um, and even this is taking quite some time to put things in place. You know, you have this, uh, this CARA initiative in the uh, French speaking part of Switzerland, which is going to, to start in 2021. Uh, the law, um, is in place since four years now. So it took four years for the canton to agree with each other, for a few cantons to agree with each other on which initiative they would you know, collaborate with. So, so we see things are complicated. I think we would need a strong national leadership in terms of uh, uh, you know, digital health data in Switzerland. Really, we are missing that a lot, I think. We would need a national law for that and not 26 cantonal laws because we are going nowhere with that. So, so I, I strongly believe we need something at the national level where it is the same standard in every region and canton of the country. Okay, thanks Murray. Then I'll pass the ball to Ulrich as, as Murray suggested that we gradually then drift towards the industry and, and, and clinics. Um, Ulrich, do you agree with Murray that indeed, let's say the positive um, cantonal segregation of Switzerland is here much more eventually a hindrance towards progress in at least homogenization of, 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 of the data sources, if we're talking about the clinics, um, or do you have a different opinion on this? Um, I think I can fully agree. Um, uh, of course, there is no um, national health information system. I was heading the population-based um, um, health statistics on the federal level. And of, and of course we recognize this and uh, there will um, in, in also in the in the near future no be no integrated health information system but of course there is a health information system but it is not integrated 
Huh? That's that's the point. Out of our own history, huh? um, which which is not an NHS but an insurance history, and out of the history of the profession, the medical profession, which is which for a long time was was not evidence based but eminence based. Um, uh, uh, we have we we really have um, these these uh, uh, these segmented. Um, 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 da databases. Also on the national level, huh, uh, uh, we were not able for 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 a long time uh, to to find, for example, and to operate uh, with personal I identifiers. Um, um, we we uh, uh, used in, in different national statistics, for example, different um, um, definitions. Uh, of what, for example, a nurse is, huh? you, you have to imagine. Um, so you could not compare. Huh? And uh, when, when I went there 10 years ago, I, I tried uh, to, to break up the, the data silos and um, to, uh, to, to integrate them according to topics, but that, that, was, that was a Sisyphus work. So, um, uh, and we are not, uh, re re we did some, some steps forward. Yes, uh, that, that, that's correct, but, um, 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 uh, there are a lot of reasons, and uh, it's a little bit a schizophrenic system huh, we are living in, huh, because on the research side, huh, all, the, all the physicians are up to date, huh, they are using every opportunity, and they are absolutely competitive, worldwide competitive, but when we come back to our home base, huh? we are catapulted and not, not into the middle age, of course not, huh? but we have a, um, uh, we have a time um, uh, gap perhaps of 20 years, 10, 20 years. Um, I, was, I was also part of the, uh, 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 the, the, the process of creating the, uh, the cancer registration law. Um, and I was talking about uh, uh, with, with uh, Mr. Zeltener, um, uh, the former director of FOPH. And um, he said to me, you know, uh, when I was joining FOPH as a director, and that's 30 years ago, one of my major topics was to create a national cancer registry. Huh? That was 30 years ago. So, um, okay, now we have um, in, the, in, the, in the law and in the ordinance, uh, we, we have the basis, not all of the cancer registration, huh? we have the basis um, for supporting, fostering also other um, uh, registries, but you have to recognize that um, r registries on the, on a national level uh, um, um, is is quite a new instrument. So, but there is innovation. Yes, there is innovation, um, and that's that's a really good step forward. And I'm 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 really positive, although it's only an epidemiological um, uh, register, um, uh, and we. We and mainly the cantonal registries, uh, Muriel is smiling, um, are only allowed to collect data that are named, of course, in, in the law and in the ordinance. But the cantons are, of course, free to add additional variables according to their needs. Huh? So there is, uh, there is a, I, I, I think, it, uh, also a small turnaround what is necessary and, of course, what is possible. Um, that is only one point. Um, it, it's 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 only for the epidemiological registers because these are the main questions that the public um, uh, wants to address um, to to optimize the quality of, of 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 the supply of the infrastructure. So the basic questions, huh? not the detailed questions uh, that are interesting uh, for 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 really for for the physicians. So there is not not yet huh, an integration uh, with a with a clinical data sets uh, or with a Swiss public health network. Um, uh, but we organize that we, for example, use same methodologies. So although the others are not able um, to, to, to use um, the social um, um, identification, personal identification number, uh, we can match um, the, the, date, the databases uh, accordingly to the uh, human um, uh, research uh, law. So that, that's possible. Huh? It is it's really complicated, huh? Um, and 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 the uh, and the patient and the data protection professionals are really uh, pressing very very hard. But it is possible. But it costs really money, huh? To organize these things, 
um, and and um, and that is really hindering, uh, of course, uh, research. Hey, thank you very very much. I think I'll, I'll I'll pass then now to Ansgar before going to Gerhard. Ansgar, how do you see then, um, let's say, for the concrete case of of um, advances in, in clinical neuroscience when we're talking about really serious and omnipresent uh, problems like Alzheimer's disease and similar. Do you think indeed that a political top-down um, vision plus eventually pressure, let's say mildly, could motivate people to share data really for the purpose of advancing with clinics, creating registries. Of course, you said clinicians and, and, and of course nurses, um, the care personnel is, is, is um, overlasted. That means we don't have to say that it's going to come for free. But do you think in more general sense in terms of mindset that here in Switzerland, we will be able indeed to move ahead as Muriel and Ulrich said, uh, to catch up with other countries that are more advanced uh, in this sense. Well, I I am positive. I think we can we can um, uh, make it, but uh, a pure top-down initiative, I think, is not the way to go. So um, um, the cantonal organization in, in Switzerland is um, it's very strong, as Muriel said, and um, I think there, there are some positive aspects in it. And uh, we should um, recognize that, um, that we should, um, I think we are, we are better off if we have a um, bottom-up process. So if we, if we include the um, many stakeholders as possible, and um, if, we, if we have a common initiative, um, so include the, the memory clinics all over the country, but also include the, the GPs. Um, I think it's very important if you talk about dementia, it's not only memory clinics, not, not only universities. Uh, we need data probably also from, from general practitioners and of course also individual data. Um, so this is very um, challenging and um, a top-down process, I think, I think will not work. So there are major challenges in form and content um, of, this, uh, of this data uh, acquisition. Okay, and now to thank you very much, Ansgar, to, to Gerhard, how do you see then, let's say this landscape here in Switzerland in the national and internet uh, in the international uh, context because I wanted also just to put a seat for further thought we're talking now about clinical data registries but Ulrich and and of course Mira especially in epidemiolo epidemiology we know that this is just a fraction of uh, uh, potential data coming in what what Ansgar mentioned also uh, general practitioners, but why not also such initiatives like um, in the UK with the UK Biobank, where we have half a million people which are genotyped also with, with very deep phenotype in terms of diseases. It's planned that 100,000 of these half a million individuals uh, from the community dwelling population are getting also a brain scan. This is also for us as neuroscientists amazing. How do you see this, let's say, from your perspective, also uh, as somebody who is um, interested in neuroscience, I would say? Yeah, thank you, Bogdan. I think uh, you, you addressed a very important point as well. I think it, it first we need to differentiate, are we talking about a disease registry or are we talking about treatment or drug registries? Um, it is, I think it's, it's quite clear that um, drug registries, um, treatment registries usually were um, facilitated um, for good reasons to answer questions to the authorities. Uh, I think um, one of the first step was very much looking into the long-term safety of uh, treatments of new drugs uh, being um, approved and brought um, to the patients. And the disease registries usually were built um, based either on 
local requirements like in Denmark or Sweden where the government provided um, the framework of collecting data on certain diseases or maybe in Denmark like uh, for the for the entire population um, and of course academia was the most important part in there for example Karolinska in Sweden but I think this is um, of course there's a lot of history behind that uh, and I think it also includes a cultural aspect and I think that was mentioned uh, several times uh, it's also the willingness of um, the community to share data that's a very important aspect and what we see that this th there are major differences from country to country within Europe uh, in terms of um, patients enrolling into um, a data sharing initiative and I think that's a very important uh, step to consider and that actually brings me back to um, the basic concept of the registry and I think that also needs to be clearly defined what do we want to achieve with the registry what is the objective what should be the outcome as I said for a company that is bringing a new drug on the market it's very much driven by the requirements of the authorities to provide long-term safety data in the clinical practice and I think that's really important because we know all the benefits from those registries on the long-term longitudinal follow-up to identify those side effects that are not being seen in the clinical practice but also then fine tuning on um, maybe we could use the umbrella of precision medicine in the registry, in the real world practice, you hope to be able to identify really the population that really benefits from the treatment because we know in a clinical study you have responses versus non-responses. And I think that should be the starting point to clearly define what do we want to achieve with the registry. Going back to Switzerland, I have to agree, and I think Ulrich mentioned it uh, and, and also the others. Switzerland for me is the country with the highest density of absolute experts, at least in the space where I have some experience in neuroscience, MS, and other neurodegenerative diseases and Alzheimer's disease. But I agree. Um, it seems that the environment puts quite some obstacles there to build a very strong registry. And we, the current status, we want to set up a consortium of registries across Europe. Unfortunately, Switzerland is not part of, uh, it's part of the discussion, but we're not at the stage where we could say, Yes, we could already go into detailed discussions. So I think um, I've heard now a lot of uh, reasons for why it is. I think I agree with what Ansgar said. Uh, it needs to be built from the bottom up. My understanding is across European countries, the regulatory framework is there, also considering the very restrictive data protection laws but from basically the, the governments provided the framework, but now we need to build it from, from the bottom up. And I think uh, very important for me is define a clear objective. What do we want to achieve with the registry and then communicate and then um, socialize and get uh, the buy-in of the partners. Indeed, we, at least I do not consider myself as a specialist in the field, neither of ethics nor of, 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 of law uh, or similar regulation. Already in our previous roundtable, where we invited representatives from the insurance companies, of course, we hit also there somewhere low, uh, a wall, because we see, of course, the two sides of the medal, right? On the one hand side, I also agree with you that there should be the need, at least for us clinicians seeing patients with neurodegenerative disorders, particular dimension, knowing that the process starts 
years or decades before the patients come to us already in a certain um, advanced stage of the disease. Um, we need, of course, a more broader view. But here the point was exactly to see how eventually we can achieve also in a more structured way to convince the lawmakers in Switzerland that we need also, of course, their um, help um, in order to exactly build this uh, regulatory space, what you mentioned, in order to get um, actually to, 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 to the action point where uh, indeed um, clinical data, clinical registries are possible. Then I would like then to um, slightly shift uh, to the next topic, which is indeed something what already um, Muriel mentioned. It's more, let's say, the technical side of it, because you mentioned even in Europe, we are pretty close to each other, but different. And Switzerland has a particularity having even different languages within uh, the same uh, country. And there, I think uh, we come up uh, with this question, of course, that we mentioned initially with this cantonal and very segregated way of, of uh, um, 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 implementing law. Um, the question is then to Muriel um, already, do you think, Muriel, that the initiative that you mentioned, the Swiss Personalized Health Network uh, for data harmonization, if we're talking about clinical and research institutions, will this do the magic? Because people, of course, I was rereading actually this, what I also mentioned, this um, um, agreement of the, of the big companies uh, to support this uh, medical data format, FIRE, uh, because they were sensing uh, that at, they are tapping into a big market. For the US, there were estimations that in 2025, this market will come up to $40 billion per year, right? Therefore, they have, of course, an incentive to have a certain uh, technical framework where uh, data will be exchangeable. They can offer to their clients certain services, what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is, let's say, our academic and clinical interest in this data harmonization? And how much do we have the chance also that indeed actually competing hospitals in the good sense will open and share data. So I think the, the SPHN initiative is, is really a very important one and a good one in the sense that, that uh, the, the SERI, you know, uh, State uh, Secretary for Research and Innovation has put quite some money on the table and has, you know, um, delivered this money to the hospitals, university hospitals, quite, you know, substantial amounts uh, on the condition that they would follow the, the rules, the same rules. And, you know, when when large amount of money com comes in, that's a very strong motivation to, to follow the rules. So, so I think that was a clever, a clever move. Now, this at this stage involves uh, only the university hospitals, and there are many, many other players, of course. Uh, so I think this is the easy part of the of the job because, you know, most university hospitals have, you know, big IT teams and they, they have to deal with huge amount of uh, data anyway, with many specialties and, and complex uh, uh, set of uh, data being produced on a daily basis. Um, but still, I think it allows to, to agree on standards to be shared. And I don't think that the other players will then choose other standards. So I think they will follow the, the, the stream basically, so that's a, an important move. Now there is an initiative on uh, regarding population-based cohorts, as you know, Bogdan. So to, to create, you know, to create interoperability across those population-based cohorts, we do have some sets of variable that are not well covered, you know, within routinely collected data in hospitals, you know. So that are classical and typical of population-based cohorts. So, so we, we are working on that. We are working on basically, do we agree on how we organize the data and how we, we structure the metadata? And once you, know, you have that, then you can feed in a lot of things 
quite easily, uh, uh, you know, you can take data from multiple sources, multiple cohorts uh, to answer, you know, questions of interest in particular for population-based cohorts because they are classical, you know, uh, joint uh, exposures that are being measured in such cohorts. So you, so you can do quite a lot together uh, with respect to tobacco, alcohol, physical activity, diet, and things like that. You know, most of them do collect uh, very similar data so, so there's quite a lot we can do. And then there is this uh, uh, new initiative, ongoing initiative, where we were working on a pilot phase of uh, the Swiss Health Study, SHIS, which is uh, directed and financed by the Federal Office of Public Health, where we collect uh, data in the Canton of Vaux and Bern at this uh, time being. Uh, we will write a report uh, for the Federal Council, try to convince our federal authorities to invest into a national infrastructure for large scale population based cohort in Switzerland. So our little Swiss UK Biobank equivalent, uh, it will be smaller than the UK Biobank, uh, but let's say compared to the size of the country, uh, quite reasonable. But of course, there is no guarantee that this is financed. But the idea is to ensure that at least at the infrastructure level, you have something that can last for 10, 15, 20 years. This is not possible via classical SNF funding. And as you know, they have now stopped supporting the cohorts, except HIV and Swiss transplant cohort. But for the others, in particular the population-based population cohorts, SNF does not agree to fund this structure anymore. So that, you know, it's quite, quite an effort to identify enough money for, for the core to, to, to be of uh, you know, long enough duration for it to be of interest because you need 20 years. You need, you know, but but that's a pity because for Colaus, like Colaus, you know, now that they are reaching this this very interesting duration, the SNF stops. So I think that that's a bad, from my perspective, not a so good decision on their side because the value of the data increases every additional year. And, and I think that's, that's a real pity that they don't take this into account. So, so I think uh, the idea is to really ensure that at the federal level, this you know, sustainable infrastructure is in place so that then you know, research teams in Switzerland, you know, answering different questions, different interests can use this infrastructure to facilitate uh, the, the analysis of you know, uh, large enough uh, data sets that, so that you can answer interesting questions and also be competitive at the international level. So, but, and then some people question, why do you want to do this in Switzerland? Because you have the UK Biobank, you have the Nationale Cohort in Germany, you have the Constance Cohort in France, the Cadore in China, but those cohorts provide no information on the exposure of the Swiss people and how you may, you know, uh, also evaluate the impact of, you know, interventions that you would apply within the Swiss context. So those calls don't pro provide no, no information on that. Of course, they are useful for physiology, pathophysiology, but if you want to know what is the situation in Switzerland and do the, the treatment and the preventive measure that we put in place in Switzerland are they efficient? You know, are they effective? Uh, it's not the UK biobank data that can provide those type of information. So I think we we still need to invest money in Switzerland for such an initiative in my way. And with respect to brain health, as you said, you want to collect data before people have their you know clinically clinically diagnosed dementia, well before, because you want to act early. You want to to delay the onset of the problem. Right? Very good, excellent. And Ulrich, would you then please spend a little bit also historically this question, because if I may summarize what I got from Muriel, she really sees this infrastructural technical part also as a conditio sine qua non for of course, efficient um, 
um, data sharing, building the, the, the proper registry that will serve then at the end clinics and, and, and the citizens here of Switzerland. For the cancer registry, how, how, how did it happen? Was it, let's say, the magic that it was first the big money that created the infrastructure and then uh, the data started pouring in? Or can you please tell us a little bit about this? It, it, yes, I, I would love to do. Um, th th thank you very much for the questions. Perhaps one point. Right now, you have the opportunity um, to show the usefulness of such a uh, register. Uh, think about the two agricultural um, um, initiatives. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, there's a, there's a surveillance program for, as an example, um, of the SECO. Um, uh, they, they want to build up um, um, to, 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 to check the consequences of pesticide, uh, pesticide usage for, uh, for the farmers. Um, and, and we know this from Ballet, um, um, that that uh, uh, around their ag ag agricultural regions, um, you you have uh, um, yeah um, findings that are uh, that that uh, that are very uh, recognizable um, um, in uh, according to to uh, um, new data or perhaps old data. So um, and this this pressure. Uh, with the with the cancer registries were built up, as Muriel said, over time, because there of course is a very strong history um, with the cancer registries in uh, in Switzerland. The oldest one is fifty years old, Baal and Geneva. Huh? There were always local initiatives, huh? locally driven, but internationally very very well. Um, uh, um, established and um, embedded um, research activities, and over the over the time they found together together. And because Switzerland is so small, and we have two less cases, huh? like in clinical cancer research, SAKK, for example, as a role model, um, they recognized very early that they had to harmonize. Huh? Um, and of course, um, they were very strong. They were they were dominant uh, researchers, and so the harmonization was 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 quite uh, difficult for for uh, 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 for a long time, and. Um, I, I think 12 or 15 years ago, uh, when it was clear um, that, the, that the discussion in the parliament was going to establish an, an, an law, um, uh, which of course is also mainly a financing instrument for the registries. Huh? You have to recognize this. Who was making the pressure? Huh? Who was uh, uh, selling the, the, the cancer childs and so on? Huh? It, was, it was the Cancer League and the researchers. Huh? And they made really hard selling. That was hard selling. Um, um, uh, they, they, uh, 15 years ago, it was it was clear then, and then the FOPH um, also showed up um, and and said, okay, we have to to organize uh, a, a process um, of, of of small building up. So our foundation um, uh, was uh, uh, was uh, was founded, uh, was built up. So the cantonal registries founded the national uh, foundation. Um, Cancer League gave the money. Um, um, and and uh, and of course FOPH also, and then we try to harmonize. And of course, um, you have to harmonize and um, uh, to ha to have a chance because the longer your time uh, 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 development you 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 can show uh, the 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 more valuable um, the the data are. That's that's absolutely correct. So you have to think in bottom up um, in initiatives. But you have to think always in an integrated uh, manner. Huh? You have to have in mind what, what 
sh shall be the purpose first, huh? like uh, Gerhard said. Um, the second, what are the technical infrastructure we have to standardize huh? um, so that you can finance and be established um, at, at the different centers, huh? but um, have an have a, a infrastructure that is easily integrated, interoperable. Um, um, so you, you have to have the future in mind. Um, uh, and uh, uh, and and of course promote then standards. Uh, that's what we do now because that was also clear. We we ha we had um, we had in 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 our back and financing also the activities of our foundation for for ten years. Uh, we we had the task to harmonize and standardize, but that was more or less not possible really huh because there was no pressure huh? we had we had to uh, show the carrot huh sorry muriel um, um the carrot was was money uh, from the foph which which could not go directly to the cantons but through our um, uh, foundation to the cantonal registries and we showed the carrot and we said if you do this uh, um, uh, in, in a harmonized way you will receive money so that that was the mental construct muriel i don't i really don't know if it, it was but that was my interpretation so it makes money makes the things easier huh? um, and uh, but it was not enough huh? so now we as a national um, agency for cancer registration have now the power huh, to standardize and to harmonize and of course we promote also the fire standard no? um, because um, uh, you know it's it's not only the hospitals huh, the university hospitals which are high-end uh, electronified and um, uh, normally can can manage um, uh, delivering the data easily uh, we also have the small um, uh, practices um, and we also allow um, a, as an example um, uh, uh, sending in uh, paper uh, uh, paper reports uh, fr from physicians huh? all only to um, to collect as much uh, data as as possible um, so uh, but you also have a has, have a basis huh? with the with the memory clinics um, um, that only as an example, um, um, that that must be clear. Huh? They must go in one direction uh, with one with one standard, uh, and then they can develop the power and also make the pressure, um, um, which which is needed. And um, um, it is really marketing huh? communication um, is is of most importance. Huh? You you have to show what is happening, and you know you like cancer too have a have a real problem because the exposure to risk factors is now huh, and the cancer will develop in 20 or 30 years so nobody's interested ask Gerhard huh? he has also an industry if if the positive effect is not cannot be measured in one or two years time every financing is really problem all the quality initiatives all have the same problem so you really have to professionalize this thinking uh, and 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 also the marketing how can you bring your um, uh, points points to the to the to the public and then uh, um, um, in inform um, the the parliament and uh, the, the the key players um, so that that that's the way uh, it worked with us Oh, these are already heavy thoughts. Um, Ansgar, um, do you can you can you can you see indeed how we can learn from 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 let's say the experience with um, cancer registry? Because I agree indeed in our case, well, cancer you say exposure is also decades before the the the, the cancer starts, but. If the diagnosis is there, suddenly the, 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 the whole world changes. And in our case with dementia, actually these early stages until diagnosis and so on, they also have a certain impact on not only the patients, but their surroundings. That, mean, that means in my opinion, it's even more difficult in our case. I don't want now to make a competition between these two to make this immediate gain visible. Uh, Ansgar, how do you see, how can we move the field forward exactly with this psychological in positive terms selling point to the decision makers that they support us? 
Yeah, uh, this is a difficult question because uh, I mean this is a key question. So uh, from this point of view, I agree that uh, the cancer and and the dementia are um, somehow similar because the the effects uh, of what we do now will be will be in in twenty or thirty years in the future, and it's even more complicated. I agree because uh, it's not only about let's say smoking, um, which you can measure quite easily, but it's uh, about um, things like um, cognitive um, exposure so how much uh, do, do you learn how, how are you cognitively active how to measure that so it's an, <laughs> it's even more difficult in dementia than in, in cancer research but um, your question um, how to convince the authorities to to put money in there it's a really a really difficult question I'm not a politician and uh, I think uh, it it must be a political initiative to and yes you are right we have to convince them that um, with the with the opportunities of the of modern uh, digital health of data uh, basis that we have right now and will have even better in the future um, we have much better opportunities than 20 years ago to to measure um, risk factors for example and to measure effects um, of prevention uh, strategy, strategies, for example. So from my point of view, I think if we want to convince um, politicians to give money, we have to convince them that uh, prevention is the key, uh, key factor that we are talking about. And um, to measure effects of prevention, we have to build up uh, good databases that include also individual data that we have from digital devices and so on. Um, and uh, the effects will be measured in 20 or 30 years. So that's not an, that's not an easy field, <laughs> but uh, would be a great opportunity, in, especially for Switzerland with these uh, very, very good structures here and uh, very high developed country, very good digital infra infrastructure. So we have some um, strengths here and we could we could use them, but we need a lot of money, I agree. Okay, before moving to Gerhard, I have to raise hands first, Muriel. Unmute yourself, Muriel, sorry. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, maybe a way to start could be to set up a digital cohort because, you know, as, as written by Lavinia, uh, it's less expensive than having people come to a center, you know, take blood and measure. Of course, that would be nice to have, but it's much more costly. And on, or, because if we take cancer registration, we don't know who smokes and who don't smoke in the entire population. So it's a big difficulty just to assess smoking as a risk factor for cancer incidence, you know, because in those who do not develop a cancer, we don't have the information on smoking. And this is a major risk factor, right? So I would be already so happy to have the smoking status of let's say the half of the vo population. That would be a dream, you know, to link that with the cancer registration data would be such, and that's not something fancy, you know? Uh, but smoking would be of, you know, of interest for many other chronic diseases, right? So just having, let's say, a smartphone application, uh, I don't know, a riskometer, uh, digital, where, you know, you could convince people, enough uh, people to, to regularly update the status once a year, you know, once a year, you ask a few questions on whether they smoke or not, and if they do what they smoke and so on. That would be already a quite powerful tool uh, to use. Of course, you would need ask them, do you agree that we link your data with uh, this registry and with that registry? And then you, you know, progressively maybe get something quite interesting. And I, I think such a project could be not so costly to start with. The, the difficulty would be to convince enough people to participate. And of course, one of the problem we have in those population-based initiative is a participation bias, you know, because those who took part, take part are the ones who are a bit more healthy or health conscious, and maybe the ones who are not so, uh, you know, interested in their health don't want to 
to answer the questions. Okay, thanks, Muriel. I think always it seems like a no brainer. I thought also for all these COVID uh, tracking apps, but you saw in all countries, including Switzerland, what kind of debates also, of course, with important topics were initiated, but I'll pass them to Ulrich, who also wanted to say something about this. Unmute yourself. Yes, th thank you. Um, researchers tend to argument um, on a scientific basis, and I think that is wrong. Why do I do this? Or do I think this? You have to argument emotionally. Um, and, you know, um, uh, the neuro neurodegenerative um, um, illnesses are so prominent. They are in every family, exactly like cancer. Huh? So, um, if you want to build up and also to finance, huh, you have to have um, a, a pressure organization that is hammering this message emotionally into the population um, and, and also give him, uh, give always um, um, the, 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 the sign of the sun huh, uh, uh, rising if you do this and that and, and so on. Think and learn also from the industry what they what they are doing. Think about um, also the insurance industry. Huh? They um, and 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 also think about um, uh, the, the the cancer um, the, the cancer uh, um, uh, movement. Huh? So um, uh, it is um, it is it is a distribution um, um, uh, war huh? of resources. Huh? Where the resources go huh? and. I think you, you have, um, and, and it is not about logic. Huh? Of course, it, it is very clear. Huh? Prevention must be top priority. <laughs> but look, huh? uh, uh, top priority is, 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 is in, in, in cure huh? or forgetting huh? um, uh, what, what, what is happening outside. outside. So um, I think um, you have a really a very, very strong instrument because um, the epidemiology is, is, is so present um, and I think you have to use this. Sorry. Excellent, excellent. These are, these are indeed good points. And I wanted actually now to um, move back to Gerhard with again, a little bit slightly different question. Um, it's about something that when I learned uh, about this, the so-called pragmatic trials, I was fascinated. How I read this is instead of having a center that patients are coming and getting a certain novel treatment, disease modifying, etc., you actually um, have this distributed along multiple centers where patients also get this treatment and then you can pull them together because they're getting this very same treatment and then you get much higher uh, number of observations, um, better stats and so on. Do you think, Gerhard, also this could be an additional motivation now being part of the, of the, of the pharmaceutical industry, which particularly for, for looming eventually um, disease modifying treatment in Alzheimer's disease, this can be used as an additional argument that can serve us um, uh, clinicians and uh, uh, caretakers and patients uh, suffering from uh, Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative disorders. Um, yeah, thank you, Bogdan. So I made so many notes because this is so an interesting uh, discussion and actually I wanted to respond to so many things, but we would run out of uh, time. I think uh, um, Ulrich, first of all, mentioned a very important word. It's emotional and I think cancer research, the cancer experts understood that already 20, 30 years ago, that this needs to be lifted. The emotional, the, the discussion needs to be lifted on, on an emotional level. And I think that's needed now in dementia and Alzheimer's disease as well. Or let's, let's keep it on the, on the level of overall of brain diseases or dementia. I think coming back to your question, and this was also mentioned, 
Uh, standards, standardization is really important. I think we need to have an agreement on a core data set that we want to collect uh, and then collect it in a harmonized way. And Lavinia put it in the chat, digital tools can be tremendously helpful. Yes, of course, we need to build those digital applications with the end user in mind. And the end user will be a, a person with memory complaints plus the caregivers. And I think that's very important uh, because what I'm seeing is uh, uh, quite a lot of applications being created and built and maybe even provided, but not targeted to the user. And this is really important. But if we consider those important aspects uh, with the standardization and harmonization of the collected data, then we can also use new innovative ways of collecting data like pragmatic trial, once more also considering the burn of data and evidence collection for the patient and the caregiver. And by allowing short distances to um, the memory clinic or another expert center, um, and by reducing also the time, let's say, that is needed in order to capture those data through digital innovative applications, I think that would increase tremendously also the acceptance of participating in such an evidence uh, collecting registry setting. And I think that's some, some aspects that should be carefully considered. Um, and with that in mind, I think uh, we could uh, take a tremendous step forward in uh, collecting data and then eventually generating evidence. What is certainly very important is to consider the digital architecture in this setup and how we can build the interface to bring the data together. Once again, also very important, is it patient level data? Is it aggregated data? But uh, nowadays, so many um, innovative applications or also uh, interfaces are able to extract the data from various systems, bring the data together and allow an aggregated evaluation, statistical analysis. I think it's, it's all there. We just need to fine tune and bring it together. I think that, that's very important. That's what we're also working towards. And it's very important. I think that many different stakeholders partner there. I think patient, patient association groups are very important to be involved in setting up the registries so that they can speak on behalf of the patient and the caregivers. And then together with the physician group, uh, build uh, those new applications into the data collection. That would be my, my idea. Okay, but I mean, I hear now from the different um, uh, opinions, of course, um, very positive messages. This is what we had also from the insurance companies. They were saying, of course, we are committed also to improving, maintaining brain health. We will do whatever it takes to, to do it. But this is sort of an ideal world, right? How can we reach this sweet spot where both industry with their interests, politicians with their interests, and then clinicians plus patients, patients' organizations, and so on, can get actually this consensus what is needed and how is needed. I mean, even simple things that we discussed during the last round table was the ownership of the data, right? I mean, a brain scan of a patient with dementia, who owns this data? Is it the patient by himself or herself because he or she via his uh, insurance contributions, health insurance contributions is getting this scan and this is his or her data? Is it the institution that is um, uh, providing the infrastructure? That means the hospital, uh, is it uh, somebody else? You see, these are many different questions and I think 
for us at least in our brain fit for life um, view, we are trying now to decompose all these different um, elements and come up with a certain solution because obviously we are never going to make people all these different uh, stakeholders happy, right? But if you look in terms of confidence by the population, clinicians, doctors, they're at the highest level, much higher than politicians and so on. That means, and, and people are really convinced that sharing data and contributing to research uh, will of course give them either directly or indirectly a benefit. That, 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 that's for us the big question now, how can we, instead of really repeating again, the same trodden paths, how can we do something novel that we indeed make the difference? Gerhard, up to you now again. I'm not really sure if it's novel, but um, um, I consider it important um, to have a group of experts representing different stakeholders as a steering committee. Um, and Though this steering committee is, is basically the data custodian, they, they need to have a consensus of who owns the data. Is it the patient, the hospital, or is it the registry as the sponsor with all um, uh, possibilities, but also responsibilities? I think that's very important because the sponsor obviously has a tremendous responsibility also there. And with this steering committee, um, this steering committee would need to drive this forward, partnering with the relevant stakeholders from politics, from funding bodies, could be industries, but also of course, governments or other bodies, and with their community, of course, this is um, the, the medical community and the patient advocacy groups. Um, what, what we are also always bringing in is an expert on ethics uh, to discuss important things like uh, data privacy and burden for, for patient and caregivers. But a, a small, but uh, um, representing important stakeholders group of a steering committee to drive this forward. And I think it strongly depends. And I think uh, Ulrich and Muriel, my, Will agree, and also Anska, it, de um, it depends on people who really are willing to invest a lot of their private time into driving this forward. I think that's that's what we are seeing. Where there is a, a successful registries, uh, we see that those people are really the steering committee is really dedicated to that, and what is the benefit of that? Of course, it's it's multiple. You have so many benefits of a registry. And I think um, what was very important, Ansgar mentioned it as well, it's this collecting data in a cohort that not yet is considered to be a patient. And that would be so important in dementia. That would be so important. And there's a big, big knowledge gap. How can we take preventive measures to push the clinical presentation of dementia five, 10, maybe even 15 years without um, uh, therapy. So a uh, meaning, uh, meaning chemical therapy. And I think that would be possible, but we need to work hard on that. Excellent. Before Ulrich, it's Muriel who wanted to say also something. Thanks, Gerhard. Uh, Muriel, again, the micro, sorry. <laughs> sorry, maybe now is the digital technologies uh, because we tend to think of a cohort of, uh, you know, sample of many people, but uh, what if we would, let's say, set up a, a cohort that is just the addition of one person, you know, multiple one person, each having its right to say, okay, I participate or I don't participate. Let's say you have a, your own health data account, bank account, protected, secured, that, let's say you put, you give this to the participant, we ensure that the data is stored in Switzerland, it is secure and blah, blah, blah. You, you provide this really state of the art, you know, privacy protecting environment. And this is a secure tool and that's like your bank account, you know, 
you collect your own uh, health data, what you eat or whatever you want. Basically, you have the option, you know, diet, the option smoking, the option whatever, uh, and then you it's you it's yours. But then if you, if you know if you go to the hospital, then you can you know download the data to this account and so on. And then that when there is a project, you receive a questions. Are you interested in that? And then you can say, yes, let's say you have dynamic consent. To have something that is really top, you know, bottom up, because it's really the person willing to, to decide on her own whether she's interested in that type of research or not. And then, but you have some type of standardized options to choose from so that the data is collected in a harmonized way. So that as a participant, you say, okay, if you take part to a project, you know that you will be able to compare your situation with the one of the others. And then you don't know the data of any other person, but you know the average of the others and you know where you stand. You, you see, my, um, wouldn't that be a, a, a model to, to maybe to think about? Oh, fully my vision also of the future, but again, this calls again for much harmonization, et cetera, particularly in our domain, if we're talking about not only prevention, but also what Aska mentioned, this sub subtle uh, cognitive, et cetera, uh, um, um, elements that we need also for, for, for the time being. I was thinking even before giving to Ulrich the word, um, that there are some companies uh, with some products. There was um, recently I was looking at some tags that you can put at some objects that you frequently tend to lose. And I mean, are we not losing this uh, competition with these big companies? Because if I track for, for, for myself, if I have these tags and I'm approaching this function to find my keys or whatever that are tagged with this little tag, uh, I'm approaching this more and more frequently, and then my GP is getting sort of a red flag. Ah, Bogdan is getting very forgetful. I mean, this is already a very important and interesting source of information, right? Let's see, but Ulrich, up to you. Really a wonder, wonderful dis 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 discussion. Um, uh, perhaps one, one thing, um, if you have emotionalized your your targets and um, the endeavor, um, then um, you all not only find um, investors, but also patients um, that will give their data. Um, that's uh, the, perhaps the, 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 the first point. The second is, um, I, I was not only thinking about um, us as a um, epidemiological uh, cancer re register, but um, also the SAKK initiative. Um, when you think about um, this thing, um, um, okay, harmonization, standardization, how to collect data, um, which data in which way, that is a prerequisite. Huh? Um, so you have to organize this, that, that, is, that is clear. And you know, there, uh, SAKK is running the Swiss Centralized Oncology Real Evidence Data Project its abbreviation is SCORED. Um, and um, I think it is, it is much more expensive um, than, um, uh, than one thinks, um, but they, they, I think they managed to finance it um, out of Swiss National Fund in, in parts, but also mainly industry. Um, and um, um, of course, they have a tradition in, in, in clinical research. Um, out of this, they have the network, but you also have a network. Um, um, and um, and uh, they, they have experience um, in, um, uh, in, 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 in collecting data. And then there is also interest huh? because, um, because also um, industry is, is really um, investing in, in this uh, initiative because they, they bring additional data. Um, so perhaps you can uh, look also there, um, uh, Lavinia, uh, Bogdan, uh, uh, how they do this. Huh? Um, and for us, it, it's a very important partner because also we, huh? we only collect 
um, we, we, we use more or less secondary data huh? because our data in the epidemiological re register on the cantonal and national level is based only on um, the activities that are already ongoing uh, and the data collection. Um, where is the primary um, uh, source? Uh, it's, it's a clinical situation. So you, you have this already, huh? the data are available. Um, a lot of data are available. So you have to collect um, now the collectors huh? to harmonize, standardize, um, emotionalize. Um, um, and I think that that would be an option uh, to, uh, to, to think also about these initiatives. Thank you very much, Ulrich. Indeed, uh, private-public partnerships is a model that that should really be be supported. Anska, up to you now for your thoughts. It just, I just wanted to quickly respond to your thoughts, Bogdan. Uh, if we already lose the the battle regarding the data, <laughs> and uh, I would say yes and no, um, because uh, and no in regard of the clinical data. So we, uh, clinical data is something we have in, in Switzerland, and that's uh, there's uh, the problem of harmonization. If we if we manage to harmonize uh, data and and find a way to to put all the data that already exists in the different centers into one harmonized uh, setting. I think this is a huge advantage. Um, and uh, that's uh, in this in this point, uh, we will uh, not lose the battle. But uh, regarding the big data topics, so on the, uh, let's say, uh, digital health information, I, I think that uh, that the huge uh, players like uh, Google and et cetera, they are working on that and they are collecting the, the health information also from so many billions uh, of, of people in the world. And this is a hard fight. I, I think the only um, advantage that we could have is trust. So if we can convince the people that we uh, are the, the players in the system, they can trust maybe a little bit more than an, um, uh, an, uh, company from another country that is not so, um, that's not so well known for, for data security and so on. So that would be our opportunity to use also this big data. Um, but we, we have to convince the people that they can trust us a little bit more than the others, but that's really difficult. Okay, true, true point. Just before Gerhard, I pass to you a few thoughts on the topic, because I think at least my personal conviction is more this holistic view. And I have some um, examples in the domain of um, stroke uh, in the UK, uh, Parkinson's disease from the Netherlands, um, and also recently I was reading um, a certain also brain health data uh, biobank uh, in uh, Canada, how actually this idea of um, collecting data, health relevant data, uh, can be implemented actually in the pathway of the patients, you see, that means in the case, for example, of um, this uh, stroke concept in the in the UK, then everything is centralized, and actually the biggest burden for the um, acute uh, person um, or specialist who goes to the victim is uh, to get uh, the data uh, somewhere uh, stored and then transmitted to the to the hospital staff and so on. And there the idea is really to centralize all this. And of course, afterwards, avoid all the administrative burdens, be it financial, et cetera, et cetera. For um, the Netherlands, the system set up by Bastian Bloom is to create a network of not only specialists uh, in Parkinson's disease, but also the physiotherapist, et cetera, et cetera. And in this way, while giving to all these stakeholders a certain uh, standard that is well motivated by the studies and so on and so on, also the patients, of course, get more and more involved in a more standardized way. And again, this helps further. Um, in Canada, this initiative, um, it's in the field of, of, of depression. 
It means, again, if we, I think, can incorporate this idea, what Muriel was talking about, I think it's great that the patients, we all are patients also to our dentists and so on. We are the owners of our, of our data. And of course, we have a certain way to communicate our consent uh, for one or another study. But from our point of view, we can also embed also these uh, concepts uh, to make patient's life and also um, parkour either in the outside world or from specialist to specialist much easier. This would be also maybe a potential um, uh, path to go further. But Gerhard, now up to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, that that was a, a fantastic summary of what is possible, Bogdan. Uh, I think it, once again, I think it depends very strongly on the culture where people come from. And now I'm looking back to why I raised my hand uh, because Ansgar mentioned something very important. I think it's the trust. It's this very trustful relationship between the physician and the patient, which needs to be considered when we talk about um, data collection, but also active, for example, active or passive uh, screening tools that are on a mobile device or a variable. Um, I think that's very important. And I think if such a trustful relationship in our countries of Central Europe, I would, would put Germany, um, uh, Austria and Switzerland in, in one bucket, even if um, Switzerland is much more complex, but I think this is really important. And then I think I couldn't agree more, this holistic approach uh, to have this consensus from the patient, the carer, um, with the f treating physician, the physiotherapy of, for example, what is the treatment goal, for example, and that also that can be tracked with an app. There are already apps in place where the treatment goal is for example, in, in um, early dementia cases, uh, uh, mild cognitive impairment, where there is no treatment, uh, but the treatment goals still could be defined based on lifestyle changes. And this consensus can be tracked then with this app. And maybe the physiotherapy can also look into this, um, the diet experts, etc. I think that's, that's a fantastic approach. And I think this is not, not science fiction anymore. The tools are there. Important is, I think, what Ansgar mentioned, this trustful relationship between patient and the healthcare professionals. And I think that's also something that we should socialize and promote much, much more than we, we try to do it. But I think we need to go to the next step there. I fully agree with you. I, I see also, and I repeat it again in all possible um, studies, uh, the trust towards clinicians is very high. I don't think that neither here, we in Switzerland, nor in other countries, we have betrayed our patients in one or another sense. I remember just a case, again, from the UK, where the national health system um, gave some million of, of, of data sets uh, to a big um, company starting with G and then immediately there was an outcry and I think they do, did not touch this data. Um, that means also the, the, the visibility of, 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 of such, um, let's say, even for maybe a good cause uh, moves is, is very high and immediately there is a reaction from the public. I don't see there the, indeed the problem. I think much more what I would wish to is indeed in this holistic way to see the interests of all stakeholders, what you Gerhard was um, talking about. And, and if we can indeed in a smart way satisfy at least the basic needs um, of, of all these stakeholders, this could bring us definitely forward, definitely. Ulrich, up to you. One short remark. Um, you are always discussing from a scientific point of view. That's absolutely understandable and that's correct and so on, but it is not, it will not be fruitful because you overload your starting point, you will never get 
the steps necessary to do this um, in a in a in a in a in the most easy way. Yeah? It's not impossible, but um, so perhaps think about a pilot um, a project, and I, I fully agree with with what 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 Gerhard said. But think about um, a pilot project, but start with a necessary communication strategy. What is the target you want to hammer into the head of your financing bodies? Hmm? Because it's all about the money. Everybody wants to, uh, yeah, okay, uh, that discussion. Um, your financing, uh, the interests of your financing bodies, and then um, uh, think about their our their needs information needs about the outcome to emotionalize but also your path huh, to solving this problem and then you have some a limited number of variables huh, a limited number out of this to integrate uh, on different partners and stakeholders and you can build up and show uh, what it what it is what really is possible always think from the end huh? not um, you are you are thinking about the the, the, the main starting points yes huh? but what really want, when you want to build up such a such a, a, um, a system you um, have to think in a in a, in uh, 180 degrees, at the 80 degrees uh, turn around. So, what is your uh, communication um, about the, the 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 outcome? Huh? To show, okay, that here is the devil. Huh? That's the future. Huh? You are ending up in hell. So, and um, uh, Navinia, you 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 are laughing. Yes, but that it's that's the case. Huh? Think, think about um, um, our, our boss too. Huh? It's it's um, Salome von Greyerz. Huh? Um, she's she's on the third level in in the FOPH. Huh? She was um, also the head of the financing of the families who um, who have Alzheimer's uh, patients um, in, in the family and and do all the work so that they can. Uh, go in holidays for for two weeks a year huh? so she knows exactly what is happening outside huh? and um, so that's that's the outcome and then you have perhaps to for perhaps you can formulate and uh, uh, how to improve this this process what do you need um, um, that to show uh, what, what what you what you can do not always think about the repair situation huh? Um, but 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 all the rest, um, uh, perhaps these thoughts help. Sorry, I'm I'm too much emotionalized. Well, but that's the right strategy. I I have to confess, I learned a lot from all of you. But also, I'll take your advice very seriously. Like many thanks. Um, unfortunately, we are um, actually almost um, over our times, and I really wanted actually to give um, at the end of the um, of our conversation the word to ask who is um, the neurologist in the field, who can tell us really from all this conversation, Asker, I don't ask you now to make the, the brilliant summary of it, but how do you think all these different ideas that you got from Ulrich, from Muriel, from epidemiological point of view, Gerhard, and so on, how do you think, I mean, not in terms of strategy, we'll be reflecting, of course, on what particularly Ulrich said, but how much can clinics benefit from such an approach that suddenly data is pouring, not only about the general population, the risk factors, but you suddenly see also cases that you can share, um, get some indices of similar uh, problem from Lausanne, Geneva, Bern, etc. Do you think in the next five years you can benefit as a clinician from this and your patients? Well, Yes, I think so. We could benefit. This is a clear answer. But uh, I, I learned a lot from uh, uh, what uh, Uri Wagner said. So I think we we shouldn't uh, talk too much about uh, what we can benefit. We, we should talk more about uh, 
uh, the, the needs and the, the understanding of the, the major problem uh, to the public and to the politicians. And uh, this is, um, I think they are not so too much interested in uh, what we can learn uh, in the memory clinic setting from, from, a, from data sets. Uh, but of course we can learn to answer your question. Yes, and, and, and we are willing to contribute and to, uh, to share data. We have the data, we, have, we just have to share and to use them. So, um, but the key question is not if we are willing to do that, but how to convince uh, the authorities to support? This is the key question, I think. Well, unfortunately, I have uh, to give you a big, big um, thank you word from myself, but also from the organizers of the Brain Fit for Life Roundtable, Lavinia, who is there, Irene, who is also somewhere in uh, Brazil. Thank you very much, Muriel, Gerhard, Ulrich and Anska for being so um, innovative, but also so clever. And um, I hope that we will meet soon, either in person or again digitally. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that everything what we learned and we discussed today will be also for the benefit uh, of all of us, uh, but also for our patients. And um, a big thank you to all of you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for organizing. Bye-bye. Thank you for the invitation. It was really interesting um, to, to see um, uh, how much energy um, is in your system. Congratulations to this. Thank yeah. you, Rick. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Gerhard. Bye.